Today we're going to be opening up this Oak Aged Imperial Chili Stout from 903 Brewers. And what's special about this stout is that I have aged it for nine months. Let's get to it. So I don't age beer all that often. I think I've done it like twice, but I wanted to learn more about it. And there's no better way to learn than by doing. Nine months ago, I received two cans of 903 Brewing's Dracaris Oak Age Imperial Chili Stout. The brewery itself recommended trying it both fresh and aged, which is pretty cool. They essentially give you the tools to succeed and try out aging beer. If you haven't seen the video when I drank it fresh and enjoyed it, the link is in the description and here. I mean, here. So why did 903 Brewing provide two beers, one to drink fresh and one to age? Well, let's talk about drinking it fresh. Most beer should be drunk fresh as certain compounds in the beer deteriorate and oxidation takes hold. These changes in the compounds then change the flavor of the beer. By drinking it fresh, you're drinking the beer as the brewer intended. Unless, of course, they recommend aging it. In a presentation by Dr. Charlie Bamforth, Tom Nielsen, and Mitch Steele, 13 flavor developments and changes were identified that can happen to a beer when aging. These changes in flavor can occur due to time, temperature, and oxygen. In and of itself, aging beer doesn't necessarily make the beer better, but it may change in a way that better complements the style or your own taste buds. Take, for example, the video where I had a very old IPA. The focus on that video was whether the beer had actually gone bad. It didn't go bad. But it did change the flavor in such a way that it tasted maltier and... Uh, was not bitter at all and didn't have any hop aromas, which most likely was the case when the beer was fresh. Unfortunately, I didn't have a fresh one, so I couldn't really tell you what exactly changed. I just know that that probably wasn't the way it was supposed to taste. So before we get into the details of aging beer, let's crack this one open. Roll that beautiful beer footage. <laughs> So before we dive into drinking this stout, let's talk about three things to consider before aging a beer. Should you age this beer? I would say that's totally up to you. If you want to age it, go for it. Essentially, the only risk is that you may not like it when you crack it open. So what if you're a little less risky? Big, bold beers with high alcohol content tend to have more complex flavors because high alcohol requires more fermentation and to get more fermentation, you need more fermentable sugars. Aging the beer will most certainly evolve the flavor profile of a complex beer. Another good consideration is wild fermented beers. These beers include wild yeast strains that continue to be active and provide an opportunity for the beer to evolve over time. How should you store the beer? I recommend storing it somewhere dark and cool. This could be a basement or a temperature controlled fridge. Placing it in a dark area is especially important if it's in a bottle and you don't want to expose the beer to any light and skunk it. Now, what about the exact temperature? From what I have found, an ideal temp is about 55 degrees Fahrenheit or about 12.7 degrees Celsius. This allows the beer to evolve slowly over time Warmer temps are going to speed up the effects of aging, while cooler temps are going to slow it way down. So what if you don't have that temperature controlled fridge or a nice cool basement to store your beer in? You can get away with putting it in the fridge door. The fridge door is going to be cooler than that 55 degrees you wanted to hit, but the door is also going to be a little bit warmer than the back of the fridge. So you're going to have to deal with those variables. In this case, oxidation is going to outpace the temperature changes in the flavor profile of the beer. Now for my fridge door, I get around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> so
so not too bad. You should also store the beer upright and refrain from agitating it. Storing it upright will keep the yeast from forming a ring around the bottle and you'll get a clean pour. But if you like to pour out the sediment when you get the opportunity, you can totally do that too. It's up to you. And finally, the most exciting part, when should you drink it? Again, that's totally up to you. I find it easier to choose quarters out of the year, so like in three month intervals, to try it out through the entire year. If you have the opportunity, it might be fun to get a four pack and try the beer over the course of that year. Or, if you're really adventurous, try it once a year, over four years, or over six years. It's totally up to you. Today we're going to see how it changed over nine months. So I remember there being just a light cocoa smell, uh, aroma. It looks exactly the same. I mean, before it was just so dark, you couldn't, you know, you can't see through it at all, and that has not changed. And I didn't expect that to change too much. Now, for the aromas, it definitely feels a little more melded. So before, I could kind of pick out the cinnamon and the cocoa a little bit separately, whereas now, in this case, it just feels like, like, it's combined, it's it's sort of melted together. And some flavors I noticed when I drank it fresh were that it had like a me medium boozy flavor. It definitely had a full body. Um, there was definitely strong cinnamon and cocoa, and there was just like a mild acidity from the chili. Even though it was mild, it was slightly sharp. So what do, what do I expect? I definitely expect the boozy flavor to kind of have come down a bit. I expect the mild heat from the chili to have a little more of a lasting effect. My my history with spicy food is that if you leave it in the fridge, like leftovers in the fridge for a little while, the heat sort of becomes more of like a stronger aftertaste rather than a sharp acidity when you have it fresh. So I kind of expect it to be very similar to that. So the moment of truth. Let's Let's go in for a sip. Let's see how it's changed. Yeah, the 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 chili flavor is a lot more pronounced than it was when I drank it fresh. It was barely there. Uh, I think I even said I could barely get it, but when I took a sip, it just kind of like that hit me more than the cocoa and vanilla and the cinnamon. That is interesting. Yeah, it's definitely shining through a lot more. Definitely getting more of that earthiness, that full body just like feels like you're kind of in a field. If you've ever had a beer like that, you know what I'm talking about. You, 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 you even like a wine that that is full body, you just get sort of that earthy feel. And fresh, it was subtle, and here it's just shining right through. Whew! This is eleven percent. Uh, <laughs> so, I would say overall, still an enjoyable beer. But I think I enjoyed it more fresh, be completely honest. It, there was something more about it. It was easier to take in. Um, I would say the chili, just, just the fact that it was a little sharper and mild compared to now where it's really shining through. I, I think I enjoyed that just a little bit more. However, you know, that's, that's just that's the way I look at it. Um, you might have a different experience. You might like it more that way. And that's what's so cool about doing these experiments with beers. You can definitely taste the change. That's cool. Try it with an IPA. You don't have to listen to everyone when they say you can't age something. Go for it. But I definitely recommend that you do it both fresh and aged so you know what the difference is. So what about you? Have you tried aging a beer? If so, did you like it? Was there a huge or small change? Would you do it again? Comment down below with your answers. God damn it. 11%. If you enjoyed learning about beer aging as much as I did, slam the like button like a pilsner on a hot afternoon, and hit subscribe for more beer adventures. Salute.